100 years ago, on April 2nd, 1917, the lives of 4.8 million young men across America changed abruptly when President Woodrow Wilson asked Congress to declare war on Germany. There were many factors, but one of the biggest ones and the ones that historians mostly attribute is the Germans' unrestricted submarine warfare in uh, early 1917. In less than a year, nearly 1,500 men from Nevada would heed the call, mostly through the draft, but also through enlistment, greatly exceeding the quota for the sparsely populated battle-born state. Most of Nevada's draftees reported for training with the 91st Wild West Division at Camp Lewis near Tacoma, Washington. They received orders um, to develop a unit insignia. The division chose the fir tree. They chose that because that was a common uh, item, if you will, that is found in all of the states um, that the men of the 91st came from. But it still uses that patch today. Miners and hotel clerks and cowboys from places like Virginia City, Carson, Reno, and Elko were on the draft list. There were American Indians like Cousins Alfonso and Philip Kellack. And there was Horace Greeley Bliss, a farmer from White Pine County in eastern Nevada, who was a machine gunner in the Battle of the Argonne Forest in France. He was shot and killed by a sniper a month before the war ended. In all, 194 soldiers, sailors, and Marines from Nevada died during World War I, the war to end all wars. The 91st um, was selected to uh, act as a reserve for the battle at St. Mihiel. And on the uh, 29th of September, they received orders as a division to attack the town of um, Gessner, France, which was a very small village, um, but it was protected on all sides by um, quite a bit of elevation. So once they got into the town, they were basically sitting ducks by this third line German defense that was very well established. The 91st received orders to attack with, uh, or attack at all costs. Uh, they complied and at great loss, um, they captured the town. We've taken Gessner and the ridge beyond, have dug in, have food and water, and can and will hold on until hell freezes over. During the battle for Gessna, Philip Kalak was seriously wounded. While corporals were attending to his wounds, the group was hit by an artillery shell. He was buried in the American cemetery at Very Crossroads. Private Alfonso Kalak died of wounds the same day. His grave is on the top of the hill southeast of Gessna. It was a clear victory that day, but it was a lot of cost. Um, and even more unfortunate, more demoralizing for some of the soldiers is that right after that, they held it till about midnight, and then they got orders to withdraw back to where they started from that day. Overall, the division lost probably a quarter of its people uh, in World War I just in that battle. But they were also recognized at the end um, for being a division that uh, was able to advance when nobody else could. And uh, I think that speaks volumes of people uh, in the 91st and, uh, and really the resilience and the persistence that they have uh, to be able to go after an objective and, and really um, succeed. <laughs>